start now. Hello, this is Bobcast for July the 22nd, 2021. And the summer is just blasting by. Oh my goodness. We're almost halfway through the, through a summer and that that's good and that's bad. Um, good if you like to have fun. Uh, um, bad if you if you don't like the heat. <laughs> so um, our Bobcast is probably going to be a little shorter today. We um, I just returned from Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, we launched uh, this Monday the Teen Millionaire Challenge, and I want to share a little bit about that with you here today. Um, what is the Teen Millionaire Challenge? Uh, how, do, how does it work? Who's involved, etc. cetera? And uh, so in Raleigh, North Carolina, there is a, I think you can see this. Can you see this, uh, this picture? Uh, the Carolina, Carolina Exotic Car Club, private venue for car enthusiasts. It doesn't look like all that fancy of a door. It's a, it's a nice, building, but when you step inside, this is what you see when you get inside. And there's uh, several million dollars worth of cars here. Uh, most of them are owned by the owner of this club. And he is a real estate investor who's done extremely well. And he liked to collect cars. And he got to the point where he had so many cars, he had, a place to, he had to have a place to store them. And then he had this brilliant idea, why don't I make it a club? so that everybody can come to the club and uh, enjoy it while they're here. And uh, some people actually store their cars here. There's actually some warehouse space out behind this where people st store their beautiful cars. And they, when people come to the club, there are 200 members of this club and the, it costs, I don't know, 30, 40,000 dollars a year to join it. But uh, talk, about a, talk about a network. Brilliant idea. This is in Raleigh, North, North Carolina. Never heard of any uh, club like this. Brilliant idea. He's got airplanes hanging from the seats. There's two of them. He's got motorcycles all over the place. So it's uh, really, really something else. Uh, he's got Persian rugs where the cars are, are sitting. He's, I think he's Persian himself. Um, very, very kind wonderful gentleman, just amazing. And um, the, the, the teens, we selected 19 teenagers from all around the United States. Some of them were, came from a seminar I was teaching in, uh, in uh, Key West, Florida, where Tim, who, Tim is in the blue shirt. He's a Vietnamese gentleman. His wife is on the white dress and that's his son with the backpack that to us. And Tim Mai is from Houston, um, multimillionaire himself, uh, had an event in April that I was invited to, to come to speak at and found it was fantastic. And uh, Tim who has, was actually as one of the, the, the millionaire eagles in the back of the, the One Minute Millionaire book, I put all the, the names of the Millionaire Eagles in the back of the, the One Minute Millionaire book. This is in 2002. And he was, uh, in 2001, he was one of those Eagles. So this is 20 years ago. Uh, he had done a little bit of investing, but not much. He was a refugee from Vietnam. He had to escape on a boat and end up in refugee camps in, in Taiwan and in uh, Malaysia. And finally, you know, uh, immigrated here to the United States. Uh, to Houston, where he still lives. And at this event, he said, Robert, I, I was one of your millionaire eagles in 2001. Uh, we gave every one of the millionaire eagles 100 copies of the One Minute Millionaire book. So if we could get uh, 100 people, give out 100 copies, that's 10,000 books to seed the market so that people would be talking about it. So that's what drove it to the New York Times bestseller list. And Tim says, I've got, a, I've got a teenage son, he's 17, and why don't we do a teen millionaire challenge? You know, you, you were involved in the, the Eagles, uh, we were millionaire uh, uh, students, so, and we, we made our million, thank you. 
why don't you teach our teens? And I said, well, let's, let's organize it. So Tim put it together with a gentleman in North Carolina. I'll, I'll introduce you to it in a minute. So here is as the kids are arriving Monday morning to come to the launch of the Teen Millionaire Challenge. Uh, that's um, Zonder, Zonderman, that's his, that's his last, Alex, that's Alex in the blue shirt facing us here. And uh, there are 19 of them. And uh, they're from all shapes and sizes, as you can see. Tim is on the far left and that's his son. And then there's uh, Ryan, and David, and uh, that was Alex, and David, and Keegan, and uh, Kendall, and uh, VNA, and Free, uh, no, and Jake, and uh, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, um, Tim's youngest son, who's not participating, is the one on the far left. This is his actual son who's participating is in the middle there. His name is uh, Tyler. And then there's, uh, no, yeah, Aaliyah, that's Aaliyah. No, no, that's, that's uh, I don't know, I gotta remember her name. Guy in the back, that's, uh, that's, uh, Marquis, Marquis Davis, and then that's Ty and uh, African American guy in the back. That's Mark, Mar Marcel, Marcel, and there's Aaliyah and Tyler and Freedom and uh, Jaden and Mason and J Jayla and me. These are 19 future millionaires and um, exciting, exciting to see them. We, we gave them all a t-shirt. First step is to believe and then the teen millionaire challenge is on the front. And the owner of the, the uh, Carolina Exotic Club is right there in the blue, baby blue shirt. He's talking to the kids. And just how wonderful it is to actually network with people who do big things and he definitely has done done big things let's see i'm gonna go out of this for just a second and come back in so uh here they are uh we have four tables and they are here networking with each other this is javier hinojo who is our uh expert in uh, commercial real estate. Javier did a lot of flipping of houses, did flipped probably 50, 100 houses, and decided he didn't like to do that anymore. He decided to, to, to up his game into the commercial space. He decided two years ago that he wanted to really figure out how to uh, buy commercial properies. He has Sir. 650 doors now. Ask his, I guess I'm go look. Hold on a second. Got a little noise in the background, everybody. So uh, isn't that amazing to go from um, zero in commercial real estate to 650 apartments in less than two years? So this, this is... This is the four, four of us is one of the fathers and we were in a bowling alley, but there were these, these, these women <laughs> behind us. And we just took a photo just, just randomly. We weren't even thinking about it till we saw the photo when it was done. And this is the photo I don't want my wife to see. So um, <laughs> off we go. So um, here they are just networking with each other and helping each other and um, yeah, just they're just sharp kids, sharp, 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 the best. And we went bowling on the uh, the second night. And uh, he, this is our dinner on our first night. 
And the gentleman who in the white t-shirt, that's the father of Julie is the far, the girl on the far left. Uh, Rafik is his name, came to America in 1998 with no money, broken English from Uzbekistan. And now has a net worth, a, a nine figure net worth, <laughs> not eight, nine figure net worth. And he does investing in real estate and he was looking at some warehouses. He came with his daughter and while we were there, he said, I'm gonna need to go out and look at some real estate, <laughs> which he did. And um, so um, Jerry Green is the gentleman on the far left-hand side on a baby blue shirt in the far back. Jerry is uh, the son of, of uh, Kendall, who's over on the right-hand side. And Jerry has, has uh, bought and sold 1,600 houses, 1,600 houses. Uh, and Jerry now is, loves to kind of help us and he'll be a good mentor to this group. Um, here's another better picture actually. And uh, here we are on the final day. And uh, here's, our, here's our session. This is what the training is like. This is Tim and uh, Javier training on the back there. And uh, so wh what do you learn from, from this process? Um, what, what did I learn from this? Well, first of all, um, it's, uh, it's very humbling, frankly, because these kids are sharp, they're smart. They're hungry. It's about a quarter of them came because their parents wanted them to come. And uh, you know how sometimes you'll learn from uh, uh, you'll learn from somebody else's parents rather than you learn from your own. And so these these kids have come and they're networking with each other and they're making incredible progress and uh, so we, we had to teach them about mindset and we had to teach them about uh, the three fundamental areas of success I've, as I've taught you my mindsets number one people skills system skills so the most important people skill you can have is to know somebody who has done what you want to do so uh, most of these kids have a parent who's done fairly okay some of them have come from very poor backgrounds and still are very poor backgrounds. But now they've come into a network where they have 19 kids. And when I told them, I said, I said, how, I asked them and I'm back to, I would ask you, how many of you are millionaires? And I asked these teens, how many of you are millionaires? Nobody raised their hands. And I said, how can that be? Do you have two lungs? Yes, well, I, I know a millionaire in China who will write a check for one of your lungs because he needs a lung to live. And um, he's a billionaire. He'll, he'll write a check for your, for your lung. You want to sell it? No, don't want to sell my lung. I said, well, you're a millionaire. You just don't want to, you just don't want to tap into it. You're still saving it, right? So I said, oh, you have two eyes. You got two kidneys. You got, you're a multimillionaire. But that's not the point, you know, in terms of their own personal assets. If you know a millionaire and that millionaire is willing to connect you to their resources, you know, OPM was OPR, it's other people's resources. And I said, if you know somebody who has resources, who is willing to lend you those resources, then, then you have the million, it's a million that is in your, it's not in your bank account, it's somebody else's bank account, but they give you, they'll give you access to that bank account. So I asked them, how many of you have an eight, how many, how many of you have an 850 credit score? Nobody raised their hands. I said, well, somebody on our team has an 850 credit score, not, not me by the way, but somebody on our team who has the resources of an 850 credit score, because the 19 people that are in that room, 
at least half of them have parents who are doing well. The half of them have parents who are not doing well at all. But the half that are doing well, would they, would they want to help this teen group? Are you kidding? And so all of them would have access with the right deal because money is attracted to great deals. And so we're trying to teach them, if you have a great deal, then the money is in your network right now. So how many of you have an 850 credit score? Nobody raised their hands. I said, every one of you has an 850 credit score. If somebody's willing to lend it to you, it's yours. You can say it's, your, it's yours. They may not want to check your credit. They might want to just use your partner's credit. And that's exactly what I did when I bought my first apartment building. I didn't have good credit but I had found a property that needed to be refinanced and I couldn't refinance it. So I went to a friend of mine who had a good credit and good cash flow, good income, good, good financial statement. And I said, Stan, would you like half ownership in this apartment building for nothing down zero? I just need your signature. He said, sure, sounds great to me. I now signed his name to my documentation with the bank. Obviously they knew it was him. It was, he, was a, he was an owner with us now. They didn't use my credit, but they used Stan's credit. And that's how I bought my first apartment building. So my credit was not good, but his credit was perfect. So I asked the kids, how many of you make a million dollars a month? And nobody raised their hands to that. And I said, but how many, uh, how many of you know somebody in these 19 people who knows somebody who is making that kind of money? And they said, well, I don't know who that would be. Well, I should say you had four of your parents showed up here and, and now we have Javier and you have Tim, you got myself and, and all 19 of them know a hundred people and they now can network with the people they, that they know because their 100 knows another hundred. So 19 times hundred is 1900 times a hundred is what's that 190,000. They have within three phone calls of every one of those 19 kids, there's 190,000 people. And how many, how many millionaires are there in that 190,000 people? Well, we know there's 5% of the population in America are millionaires. So 5% of 190 million people means that you're close to 10,000 millionaires within the networks of those 19 kids. And most people don't think that way. They think, well, I can't afford the real estate. I can't, I can't, I don't, my credit is not good. I don't have that kind of money in the bank account. So they shut off, they have limiting beliefs. And what we try to do with the kids is take off their limiting beliefs and just say, yeah, how many of you have a $10 million net worth? And they uh, nobody raised their hands. I said, do you know somebody who has a $10 million net worth? Maybe there's somebody sitting in the room who has a 10 figure net worth, big number, big number. And do you think he wants to help his daughter? Yeah, yeah. In other words, if you are in that network, you have access to the network's resources. So we're just blowing away a lot of the limiting beliefs that these kids came into that room with. And we, we had them go around the room. How, how, how good are you? How, how do you feel about your personal, your self-esteem? Where are you at? You know, some of them were three, two, four, seven, you know? Everybody has doubts about themselves. I said, can you be rich and have doubts? Sure, sure. There are people who've done it, of course. Sometimes they do it because they have doubts, because they're trying to fill in with, for their weaknesses and they try to think money is gonna do that. If I can just make enough money, then people will like me, you know? I may not like myself, but people, my people will like me. But we, we spent, you know, a full, full day talking about mindset. Then the very next day we went into numbers, deep numbers, like how do you analyze an apartment building that's got 200 units? How do you, how do you know what to make an offer? How do, how do you know what questions to ask? You know, we spent you know, many hours on spreadsheets with them doing their spreadsheets with their computers in front of them, having never done that before, never in their life. So we have, uh, launched the, the Teen Millionaire Challenge. I flew back last night uh, after spending three days. They're, they're going to be there for another 10 days. And they're going to be 
you know, calling real sellers, talking to real owners of real properties, and they're going to have to learn how to to uh, have that uh, owner share the details with them so they can do a you know the, the the analysis on each of the properties and then they'll turn that over to an expert who will help them make or write an offer they won't end up with they'll end up with a small percent of the ownership just small but but they'll they'll learn how to do it and then when they when they go out into their city and start looking for apartment buildings that are not part of our system we got a system of generating leads for those kids uh javier does incredible system but eventually they'll be doing their own lead generation. That means how do you find an owner of an apartment building in your city? How do you contact them? How do you ask them if they'd like to sell their property? You know, they're gonna, they're gonna have to learn that because they're gonna be at this for a year. And uh, there are gonna be some millionaires in the picture that I just showed you of those 19 kids um, because they have all the resources, they have the cash, They've got the credit, got the cash flow, got the, the financial statements, the assets. Uh, and I told them, as I as I've often taught you, that all of those assets, all those assets that 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 appear to be wealth, you know, cash, cash flow, ca collateral, c credit, those things are external to you. Those are your external wealth. It's wealth with a small W. Well, so the capital W starts with you. you. You're it. You are your wealth. So when I went to San Francisco and they took away my wallet and they took away the four things that the banker needs, cash, cash flow, credit, and collateral, because you're not going to lend money to somebody who doesn't have those four things. And I had none of those four things. I, all I had was my internal C's, which is confidence and creativity and, and commitment and and uh, chutzpah, that's a C word. And there are lots of other C words that represent internal wealth, wealth that you are. So we had to teach those kids that just because they walked in the room with no assets, doesn't mean they don't, that they're not already wealthy. They are already wealthy because they're, they're, they're sharp, they're smart, they're driven, they're, they, they're connected. That's another C word, they're connect, talk about connections. They're connected. So connection means that's somebody, somebody that you know that's willing to be your make it happen person in your life. And now they, now they can go out and they can talk to other adults and they can say, I'm part of the Teen Millionaire Challenge. I look young, but boy, am I connected. Let me show you the pictures of my team. And let me show you the pictures of our, of our trainers. And let me show you the pictures of the parents of, all the, of our team. And we represent hundreds of millions of dollars. Talk about being connected. Now this doesn't seem, it may seem a little, um, you know, can an ordinary person do this? And these kids have been kind of selected from a pretty special group. Although some of them just kind of find a hurt out, heard about it and stumbled in with not, not any connections to bring with them, just somebody forwarded an email to them. And they had to shoot a video to explain why they wanted to be chosen as part of the Millionaire Challenge. And we received lots of applications with specific instructions, send us their video. And what's the first disqualification? For half of them didn't do what they were told to do. They didn't send a video. Immediately rejected. If you don't do what we tell you to do, you're not in. And that's that's exactly what happened. Same thing happened when I did my challenge in, in uh, St. Louis, where people filled out an application to work with me to be selected, be one of the three people I selected from the St. Louis unemployment lines to work with them. Send me to any unemployment line. Let me select, select someone who's broke out of work and discouraged. In two days' time, I'll teach them the secrets of wealth. In 90 days, I'll be back on their feet with 5,000 cash in the bank, never to set foot in an unemployment line again. So we said, well, you want to be one of those three? Good. Fill out the application. And then come down to the front of the room and hand it in. Give it to me. And 
some of them look me in the eye like, this is mine. I'm your guy. I'm your gal. And some of them wouldn't look me in the eye. They just they put their head down and they hand it in their application. I don't know why. Probably, probably self-esteem issues or maybe they're afraid of somebody that they, uh, they perceive as somebody more successful than they are. But they, they didn't look me in the eye. Um, I want somebody who not only is not afraid to look me in the eye, but is not afraid to look any seller in the eye. Uh, the, the governor of the state, <laughs> look that person in the eye. They, you can't, you, you have to be willing to step up to the plate and be, be recognized. And half of them didn't. They, they were put in the other pile. And the ones who were selected, you know, we, we had them fill out a, some more interviews. We did some interviews and fill out some more paperwork and about, and, and, and uh, we went through the interviews and we rejected um, uh, a quarter of them, a quarter of, well, actually half of the ones who we finally selected or who, who made it through the first cut, um, half of those, the next cut we rejected just for a lot of reasons If one fellow um, had some money in the bank and that, that wouldn't work. Some, one fellow had a master's degree in something and we thought, no, we don't want somebody that has good, those good credentials. So we rejected him out of hand. But the rule was if they came back and questioned our judgment on whether they should be selected or not, if they question us, they were in automatically. Nobody questioned it. They looked at the list. They saw their name wasn't on it. They said, oh, darn it, shucks. Guess the next time a famous multimillionaire comes to our city and wants to select people to work with for free, then we'll be ready. No, there was only one time and there only ever will be one time. And, you know, when you have an opportunity, you can't let it go. You got to and since they let it go with no, with no uh, trying to say no to it, uh, or no, no questioning our judgment on it, the eight people that were left, we interviewed them all that night. The mayor, ex-mayor of, of, uh, of St. Louis, Mayor Pelker was our judge. And we interviewed all eight with their spouses, if they had a spouse, and they came dressed up nice. You know, some of you have heard these stories before, but it's good to remind yourself of what it takes to succeed. Philip, uh, African-American living in the, really the, the ghetto of St. St. Louis, he came up to us and he said, if you don't select me, can I just, wait on the tables, bring the water to your tables and just be in the back of the room and watch. You're in, <laughs> you're in Philip. Because we need initiative and almost nobody gave had any initiative. Mary, it was her daughter's birthday that night. It was a special birthday and all the family was all coming to a birthday party that night. And she could have just blown it off and said, you know, I just don't think this is gonna work. I got my daughter's birthday party and you know, I'm, I'm a mother. I wanna do the best thing for my kid. She called all of her family up and said, I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to come three hours early. The birthday party is this afternoon, you know, five o'clock instead of, instead of seven o'clock, four o'clock, something like that. Everybody groused at it a little bit, the mother, the father, you know, but she said, this is when we're gonna have our birthday party. And she showed up, she was there. Nora, this is Nora right here, that's Nora. She had a part-time job. She worked as a bartender, as a barmaid. 
uh, in a bar close to her town in a s outside suburb of St. Louis. And we told everybody that they couldn't have a job, that they were, if they were employed, that we would kick them out of the challenge. It had to be unemployed people. As soon as she left that night, from the interviews of the eight people, we're only gonna select three. She drove to the bar and quit her job. Her own house is in foreclosure. She has five kids and a divorce and then a divorce. She's all raising them by herself. She quits her job. I mean, does that give you goosebumps? Gives me goosebumps. And when we showed up the next day at her house to, to, to let her know she had been selected, she, she called, she called the, you know, during the night, say, you know, if, if there's any reason why you're going to not select me, just let me know because I'm not going to quit. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fighter. So she was in. Those, that's how we got those three. All eight people we rejected, called them all that night and told them they had not been selected, all eight of them. But three of them would not believe us and questioned what our decision was. Philip called, said, I'll, uh, uh, I'll just, just let me in the back of the room. Mary, you know, she, she, she called back and said, I'm sorry, if I'm gonna move my daughter's birthday for you, you, you gotta select me. And the same thing with Nora. And when, when you get deeper into their stories, you find out what they really did took enormous risks. When we showed up at Maura, Nora's doorstep the next morning to say, Nora, you're in. And she said she was, her house was in foreclosure. So they still were living in there, but then she, she's about ready to lose it. She, she takes me in the backyard. Some of you heard me tell this and climbed up on the fence of her backyard fence that leaned, that was connected to her house roof. So when we climbed up on the fence, we then went from the fence to the rooftop. So now I'm walking on Nora Bowles' roof of her home. And she said, Robert, I need to show you this. And on the roof, she'd bought a can of spray paint, about $1.79 or something for a can of spray paint. Well, there was like the last money she had that week. And uh, this was before the challenge, before she was selected, before we even knew she existed. She went up on the roof of her house and she wrote in big silver letters all across the roof of her house. I could see it, H-E-L-P. God, I need your help. And, you know, I, that's why I love Nora. You know, her story was just magnificent. And that it wasn't the end of that story. There's a lot more we could go into. What I'm, what I'm going into depth on the challenge stories is because these kids that we're teaching, we're teaching them, they're gonna have to do the same kind of thing. They're gonna have, they, they don't have jobs. Uh, they're, they, they don't have credit. They don't have cash. They don't have cash flow. Some of them are making, have little part-time jobs, but pretty much, they are like the people from the unemployment lines. Uh, they are better connected to the people than the people than the unemployment lines because we put them into a team where they have resources to, 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 uh, to tap into. My unemployed folks had no resources. They had to go find the resources. They had to find the money, find the credit, figure out a way to pull it together. Um, but these, these, these teens are, also, they're not as old and as mature as the people we selected from the unemployment lines. They, they're, they, they're, they are some of their, some of the personality tests we give them. Um, they, they, they have to have their parents have to sign off on their personality tests when they're 18 or if they're 17 or 16 years old, because their personalities haven't yet been developed, you know, fully, and so we. <laughs> We are, we are, we have to get permissions from the parents to kind of teach them some of this stuff. Um, anyway, the challenge is, is, is launched now. So they had another session today. 
and tomorrow and the next day and for the next till next Friday, a week from tomorrow when they'll be done and then they'll be into teams. And what I've been doing, what I'll be doing with the teams of our teenager teams is the same thing I've been doing with the inner circle teams. We're gonna put them into teams. They have to report every week. They'll have an account of buddy. They'll go through all the various different ways of, of uh, making sure they stay on target. Because one of the biggest problems, according to Tim, our co-host, Tim, I said, what's the biggest problem these teens are gonna face? And he says, distraction. You know, keep focused, keeping focused. So the systems we created for the inner circle the infrastructure of how you make a team work so that they people report and they have a probability of, being, of, a, of achieving their dreams is is the infrastructure we'll be applying to the teams uh, the teen teams. So thank you for those of you who've been part of the inner circle who've seen that kind of grow and develop. That's how that's where I'm going to apply it. And then uh, then the teens. You now if if any of you want to watch what we're teaching the teens. You're, you're welcome to watch. It's like uh, $195 to watch what we're teaching them, watch the videos and everything. All of the money goes to the teens to help them food, have you know lot, lodging, whatever else. It, none of it goes to us. But if any of you want to contribute and want to watch what we're doing, that's what it costs. You know, and 100% and of it goes to, to keep those key teens on, on track. Um, so if you, if that's something that you would like to participate in, um, just send me an email at, uh, connect at robertallen.com and I'll forward your, your contact information to a member of my team who will track you down and, and, uh, take $195 from you of which all of it goes to the kids. Okay. But you get to watch throughout the entire year. You get to participate if you want to, um, Eventually, one of these days, we'll put it into a program Then it won't be $195, it'll be $19,500. It'll be a hundred times more money. But at this point, since we're just, this is, uh, this is the, um, the beginning test run, uh, something you wanna participate in, you're welcome to. You're gonna, you maybe you may wanna pick one of the ones you wanna watch, you know, follow. You're like, is Kayla gonna pull it off? Is, uh, what about Alex? Is Alex got what it takes, you know? Cause one of them is gonna pull it off first. Well, there's gonna be a first millionaire. That means an equity, not cash, not cash flow, but they'll have a percentage ownership in a property that has an equity. Remember, since Javier is the one who does this, he doesn't buy a property. He buys properties at 70 cents on the dollar. After the, after the major work has been completed and the rents have been uh, improved, he has to buy a property that's at least 70% of that figure. And therefore he's buying bargains as we go in. So the kids are gonna have instant equity when they get a little piece of the ownership of that. So it may only be 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, you know, but if they do six or seven deals this year, maybe a deal a month, you know, it's very realistic that they would have a million dollar net worth by the end of the year. And then when they pull together, that's, that's out on ending up with a minor percentage ownership in, in the deals we're sourcing. You know, we're doing the sourcing for all these deals. We're finding all these deals. Uh, and showing them how to drill down to, to talk to the owners, we're generating all the leads. But that when they go generate their own leads, that means they bring the person who is selling a property in their city that we didn't find. The owner is willing to sell it at our numbers and they source the money and the deal. Um, significantly larger portion of, of, uh, of ownership. Get, getting into the 10% and 15%, maybe 20% ownership in a 300 unit apartment building that's 30% below market. So 
kind of be kind of exciting. Um, what I saw with Javier as he was teaching the kids, I was going, whoa, I wish I'd known this stuff. <laughs> How come I don't? I'm supposed to be the guy that knows real estate, but I didn't know a lot of the stuff he was teaching. And just how he sources it and how, how he finds the databases. And oh my gosh, it's amazing. So um, we find ourselves at um, uh, a little bit less than longer than I usually go. Um, I would um, open it up for any of you who have a question you'd like to ask, a comment, a thought, an aha. Uh -huh. You're more than welcome to, to, um, to open it up. Hey, Bob. How are we doing? Doing great. I'm in. So whatever I can do to help the kids, and I would love, love, love to be part of this training. So I'm in. I need to run also. Blessings. So great to see you. You're so inspiring. Yeah, send it to connect at robertallen.com. We'll do. Great. You're in. We'll get we'll get that those funds to those kids so they can eat. <laughs> uh, any other questions, aha thoughts? Bob, I've got a question. Yes, go ahead. I got a blue screen when you were talking about getting into this for 195. Can you tell me where to go to get that information? Go to just connect me, connect at robertallen.com. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Send me an email. To send me your contact information. Somebody will call you and they'll ask you for your credit card. And All right. It'll be 195 and you'll go, okay, I'm in. And then, you, then it will probably take a couple of weeks for us to finally organize what we've already shot. We videoed everything we shot for three days. Uh, well, it'll be a, a, a little while, a couple of weeks before we're finally able to let you be a fly on the wall but we'll record it so you can be a fly on the wall. Eventually, we can, we, we, there'll be ways we can make you be the live fly on the wall where you can watch it as we're teaching it. Okay? Great. Thank you. Thoughts, ahas, questions, comments? All right, everybody. You know what to do. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you on the Inner Circle call for those of you who are continuing. Uh, the Bobcast, the Bobcast will probably be ending by the first of August. We'll be moving off in a different direction. I'll be doing some cast Bobcasting with some of these kids, so we might have you participate with that. But this call will 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 wind down. I'm going to be winding up a Bobcast in a kind of a different uh, context. So this is the 22nd. This will be the second. Next week will be the last Bobcast. Um, all right. Um, well, thank you, Bob. I really quick wanted to say, as somebody from North Carolina, and of course we love cars and everything, so I was not surprised by that man's question. Anyway, I loved your comment today where you said the most important people skill is, and you've got my Southern accent coming out, Henny, I'm sorry. Anyway, the most important people skill is to know someone who's done something that you want to do, and you're that person for me. So thank you. Thank you for being such an inspiration, and I so appreciate all that you've done for me and my friends. Just love you. God bless you. Thank you. See you, everybody. All right. My best to everybody. See you. Thank you, Bob. Bob.